This episode is brought to you by AHP Servicing. AHP Servicing uses crowdsourced funding to purchase troubled mortgages at a discount and then find consensual and affordable solutions for struggling homeowners. Investors can earn up to 10% per year, borrowers stay in their homes, and local communities gain stability. AHP Servicing is proud to be the only socially responsible servicer in the country. And they're on a mission to provide best-in-class loan servicing, too. To learn more, visit their website at www.ahpservicing.com or call 1-866-AHP-TEAM. You are listening to the Wealth Formula Podcast with Buck Joffrey. Get ready to change your life. Welcome, everybody. This is Buck Joffrey with the Wealth Formula Podcast coming to you from Montecito, California, uh, before we begin the show today, I do want to use this opportunity to sound the alarm that the event, the, the Dallas event, the Wealth Formula event, the Wealth Formula meetup is coming up October 1st and 2nd. And if you want to come, go to wealthformulaevents.com. Again, that's wealthformulaevents with an S dot com and sign up and hopefully you uh, will get a chance to meet up in person. Uh, the event itself, uh, you know, this is, the, the value of the, these events is hard to explain. Um, we certainly do have some great guests. Uh, this time we actually have Janet LePage coming, who's the CEO uh, and founder of Western Wealth Capital, who I think is worth the trip alone. She's a really smart woman and uh, really the brains behind uh, WWC and all of our success there. But the um, there's also other people, obviously, like Tom Wheelwright and, and some economists and things like that that are really worth the trip from an educational standpoint. But I think the feedback that we get at these events is that, yeah, the, the speakers are great, learned a lot, but the thing that really got people surprised was how much they got about got out of meeting one another you see, this Wealth Formula community is pretty special. I don't think that there is any community that matches it in terms of people who, um, you know, are very successful and smart and, you know, just really good people. They're, it's it's just really fun to hang out with others in this community. And those who've attended past meetups, I think you'll definitely agree with that. It really is like a group of really highly uh, achieving friends getting together and sharing the wealth, so to speak. Anyway, go to wealthformulaevents.com and check that out. Hopefully you'll be able to join us. Don't wait too long because it'll get filled up. So let's start with today's topic and uh, I'll start with a quote. You know, uh, Henry Ford once said, whether you think you can do a thing or think you can't, you are right. And the older I get, the more I am convinced that Henry Ford was right. You see, I believe mindset is the single most important element to success, whether that's, you know, financial, like we focus on here, or really anything else. Now, mindset, it's a broad term, but the way I think about it is, you know, uh, it, it's, it's setting your thermostat uh, internal thermostat for the expectations that you have of the world around you. And in my experience, I will tell you, focusing at least on the financial side of things, there is a wealth thermostat. I mean, there has to be. I mean, you know, you are highly unlikely to make a lot more money than you think you can. I really believe that's the case. And you're also highly unlikely to make a lot less than you think you can make or you should make. Part of that thinking uh, you can involves what you visualize for yourself on a daily basis. Now, what do I mean by visualize? And I'm not talking about, you know, any uh, meditations or boards or anything like that, any of those, you know, self-help tools, which I think are great. But no, I'm not talking about that. All I'm talking about is everyday living that we do. You know, the people who surround us, our environment and our mind is in autopilot and you have various images in your minds of who you are, you know, who you are in this world. What is your space? It's all in your mind's eye. Those are the images that I'm talking about. And if you're around a bunch of people who make a lot more money than you do on a daily basis, or you're more likely to see yourself in that position of making a lot more money. And if you know people personally who have accomplished various exceptional milestones 
you know, your subconscious is going to make it much more likely to allow you to accept that you are part of that club of success. You know, a wealth mindset is an absolute prerequisite to actual financial wealth. Now, that doesn't mean that you will get there for sure if you can see it. But if you don't see it in your mind's eye, you can be pretty darn sure that you will never get there. And you think about it, you know, you have those lottery winners and all that. I mean, that's basically what happens. Like people win lotteries, they have hundreds of millions of dollars, and somehow they tend to blow it and go back to where they came from. Uh, they're, they're just not prepared for it. The thermostat's not there. And they don't see themselves as a multimillionaire. They see themselves as a poor person. Now, if the world around you uh, right now isn't pushing you, at least pushing you to the extent that you want it to, you know, you need to find other stimuli to do that. Um, that's where a lot of people actually use some of these tools, uh, like manifesting tools and, you know, image boards and all that other kinds of stuff to train their subconscious. Really what that, that's all it is. It's like trying to create a different image of yourself that, that projects into your mind because the subconscious is extremely powerful. Now, I don't actually do that stuff myself. Maybe I should because, yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I, I feel like I'm pretty uh, successful financially by most measures, but I would like to be more successful there. And certainly the rest of my life would love to have a lot more of what you would call success. So maybe that would help me. Um, but that's not my area of expertise. You know, I'm not an expert on mindset or coaching or anything like that. I'm just an armchair quarterback with some observations. Now, my guest on this week's uh, Wealth Formula podcast, Kim Daly, well, she's a little bit of a different story. She is sort of an expert on mindset. She talks about it. She has a YouTube channel where she talks about stuff like that. But Kim is also known as an expert on franchises. And frankly, that's a pretty good combination because if you want to succeed as a business owner, you're going to have to really focus on the mental part and seeing yourself in a different place uh, than you currently are. Um, you know, Kim's positive attitude, I got to tell you, you're going to see for yourself, you're going to hear for yourself, it's infectious. And if you want to learn about franchises or just how to be a more fulfilled person, make sure to listen to my interview with Kim when we come back after these messages. Wealth Formula investors, let me tell you about something that I have been investing in for years, Something that's profitable, tax efficient, and uncorrelated to the economy. And when I say profitable, I mean over 25% cash on cash over seven years and an internal rate of return with depreciation benefits of almost 31%. I'm talking about investing in an institutional quality portfolio of ATM machines with a top five national operator. And if you need bonus depreciation this year, deduct every penny of your investment with bonus depreciation. If you are an accredited investor, you should check this out for yourself at wfvelocity.com. Again, that's wfvelocity.com. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Today, my guest on Wealth Formula Podcast, well, she's been on the show before and back by popular demand, Kim Daly. She spent the last 20 years helping people achieve financial freedom through franchise opportunities. She's got a, a real keen sense for matching clients' backgrounds, interests, and you know all their goals and financial goals and all that, and to match them up uh, with a good franchise. So today, again, we're here to pick her brain and find out a little bit about you know what kind of experience she's had with people in our group without mentioning names. Of course, Ryan Stieg mentioned her multiple times on a recent podcast, so she can talk to Ryan and not necessarily give too many details, but anyway, we're going to talk about franchises and Kim. Well, thanks for being back on Wealth Formula podcast. It is totally my pleasure. Oh, Fuck. you say that to best. all the podcasters. <laughs> Come on, Kim. <laughs> I'm telling you, you, as you just said, your investors are so, they're in the right mindset. They come uh -huh. to me with big visions. They have clear, specific goals. They know what they're trying to accomplish. And that is the easiest plan for me yeah. to then pick an efficient vehicle to help them for that journey. Well, that's that's good to hear. And, you know, I mean, I think um, franchises are, as we talked about before, is a, a really viable um, option, you know, for people who are interested in business ownership. And one of the reasons that business ownership in the context of what we do is so valuable 
is, you know, the enormous tax uh, benefits and that that sort of thing. But let's start from the basics a little bit. Again, let's let's talk about, OK, so who's who is, first of all, what is a franchise and who's it good for? OK, so a franchise is buying down the learning curve of starting a business. It's partnering yourself with people who've already figured out how to make money in a certain in a certain industry, in a certain way. Mm-hmm. And they've created a toolbox, the marketing and technology and the business plan. And you're paying a franchise fee, which is a one time fee. You pay that franchise fee, which I call the cost of entry into Disneyland. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it buys you, you instant access okay. to all of that. So that from day one, your time and money gets to move you toward profitability and you have the infrastructure that would allow you to work on the business rather than in the business, like an entrepreneur who might have to start from scratch, create all of those tools, and would never have the opportunity to have a full-time job or have other investments that he or she is managing while they're bringing this business to market as well. So in a nutshell, that's what you're doing. But the core of what I really encourage people to do is to find people that they believe in, to find a leadership team that inspires them, because franchising is all about people helping people. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we're using business plans to create an outcome, but we're connecting with people that inspire us, that have a vision that we buy into. And it's a mutual Mm -hmm. evaluation process that will eventually lead to you, the candidate, being awarded the opportunity to move forward with a particular business. So if you're thinking about getting into uh, the business space, right? Like you want to be a business owner, you know, it's, it's the right, probably the, you know, the quickest way if you do it successfully to really kind of, you know, take it to the next level financially. Talk about sort of like who you think franchising in particular might be good for. I mean, certainly there's other options to get in business. There's one that I've gone down the route of, which is starting business from scratch and you know, I've been pretty fortunate. Most of them have worked out. Some of them have not worked out and they've, they've, uh, you know, they've certainly left scar tissue there, but you know, and then there's the opportunity to potentially buy, uh, businesses that are really not uh, necessarily franchise, uh, related, but you know, may have some history to them, maybe standalone, maybe mom and pop, whatever. So where do franchises fit into that? Yeah. So a franchise, I like to say a franchise is for anybody who wants to leverage, again, a team, a proven process, a proven plan, who might not want to pay some giant multiple for some successful business. If you were to go buy a private business for sale and it's a good business, you're going to have to pay for that. Now, yeah, you get to walk into that ready-made cash flow. But in many scenarios, I can show an investor an opportunity to start from scratch. So there's no baggage with this business, right? You get to be, you get to build it from day one and, and invest way less money and get it to that point yourself and then be the one selling it for the multiple at the right. end of that. So I need people that want to follow a process. Um, you know, there, there is, there is such a thing as an entrepreneur that's not going to fit into the franchisee role. Like if you're the kind of person that always wants to be creating and inventing, Franchising may not be the right thing Mm -hmm. for you, but if you're like, hey, I want to take the proven plan and get to the part of making money sooner than rather than later and having that statistically having that um, success rate, then franchising might be a viable option for you. And if you have, as I said earlier. If you have a full-time job, you're still W-2 employed, and or you are um, building your investment portfolio, like so many of the people that I've met through through you, Buck, who have great, their physicians, their dentists, they have great W-2 jobs, but they're building their investment portfolio so that eventually they have enough passive income, right, sure. to cover their W-2 income and they no longer have to have W-2 income. A franchising can fit into that because you can come in leveraged through a brand, through the proven technology, through the the infrastructure that the franchisor has provided where you then get to work on it rather than in it. It can be manager run, what we call semi-absentee. So a business is never going to be truly absentee, like a rental property. There's always going, it's a business always needs an owner to lead it and guide it. But there are opportunities in franchising where that time commitment can be as low as five hours a week. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I'd say on average, semi-absentee means somewhere between 10 to 20 hours a week. But we do have a few options where you can be down to that five hour a week range. So that gives you all of that time flexibility. Let's talk a little bit. I just want to drill down a little bit on, you know, who is it right for, who is it not. You know, part of part of what I think, you know, you can certainly correct me if I'm wrong. I'm no franchise expert, but franchises seem like a nice option for people who aren't necessarily like entrepreneurs, but who want to be business people. It, it probably is more uh, a better business school for entrepreneurship than an actual business school would be, because really... Um, that to me, that's really what business is. You know, people ask me a lot of times, hey, should I go to business school? I'm like, are you kidding? Why would you go to business school? You want, do you want to be a manager or do you want to be an entrepreneur? If you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to be a business owner, business school makes no sense at all. They, those are the people that they train to work for me. <laughs> you know, they're not, not, right. not like to own businesses. So, Golden so, advice. <laughs> yeah. So curious, curious on your take on that. Is it, uh, is it a good place to learn potentially for somebody who's, you know, doesn't feel confident in business. For sure. It's absolutely a great place to learn, but it's also a place to build wealth. I just recorded an episode on Kim Daly TV with a former Wall Street banker guy, been there for 20 years, decided he wanted to take his global leadership skills and apply them to his own business. And four years later, that guy has built a $21 million a year in revenue, a restoration company. Mm -hmm. You know, so from Wall Street to restoration, like he didn't know anything about restoration, But that's one of the keys about franchising. You can leverage, you know, the the training. You don't have to come with the experience. I'm not looking for widget masters. This guy had never run a business for himself, but he had run a business for somebody else and managed a lot of people. And on the um, the interview with him, he told me he's not stopping until he gets to one hundred million dollars. So he had just purchased. He lives in Houston. And he's kind of gobbling up all the little, the smaller, you know, uh, franchisees in his company around him. And then he had just bought his first territory in Raleigh, North Carolina. So now he's looking beyond the Houston area to other markets around the country. Again, just leveraging his proven management skills and applying it for his own benefit. And in four years, he took a relatively low investment and turned it into a business that's, you know, today is doing 21 million million dollars. And that's just the beginning. Yeah. So it's not just for small thinkers or for people that are, you know, trying to put their training wheels on, if you will, into entrepreneurship, you can make some legit money in franchising. Sure. Sure. I'm curious in terms of, we, we've talked a little bit about it being potentially those C for root. And I think that's probably, probably the case. Do you know any statistics on this? Because we, sure. we always Every, talk about yeah. business failures, right? And how high percentage business failures are. But do we know, compare that to franchising? There's definitely statistics out there. Listen, I'm not going to give any <laughs> statistics because I don't want to be caught like she said this. But if you go to franchise.org, which is the International yeah. Franchise Association, they gather all that kind of data. But here's what I'm going to tell you, because this is what's most important to the listener who may be looking to explore a franchise. Every franchise business that you're going to look at is required by the Federal Trade Commission to disclose to you their own failure rate and or success rate in what's called a franchise Mm. disclosure document. So this franchise disclosure document allows you, the potential investor, to really full disclosure about the history, how the company got started, any litigation in the system over the last five years, any failures in the system. And by law, those people who failed out, their name has to remain in that disclosure document up to three years. And by law, you're entitled to call anybody on that list before you give the franchisor one dime. They're they're not under any obligation to call you back. And if you work with the Daily Coach, I'm going to tell you, it's infinitely more important that you find the top performing people in the system, the people that are your role models, not the people who it didn't work out for. Right. Because just like anything else in life, like success is going to be related to the owner and your vision, your goals and how you take the tools and work the tools. It's not that franchising is some magical, you know, business in a box and it works for everybody. The business system can fit in a box, but it's how the owner uses what's in the box to create a result 
that's yeah. going to create the result, right? So, so in my experience, yeah. it's the top performing people that you want to find because if they have a science to what they do, then they'll be able to share that with you. And so they also know factually why people on their business won't be successful. And in fact, one more thing on that, Buck, that's exactly my story. So I spent eight years being an average performing consultant here in my company, with my franchise called Fran Choice. And then I got very clear about what I wanted to accomplish. I sort of had a theory in my head, what would happen if? And I decided to put my head down, not tell anybody about what I was doing, hold myself accountable. And one year later, I was a history maker. I had built the largest franchise consulting business in the history of franchise consulting. And that was back in 2012. And so not wanting to be a one hit wonder, <laughs> I had to really look at my numbers and figure out what that one thing that I was focused on doing had done to the rest of my business. And then I was able to turn it into a science that then I could replicate year over year over year. And so you know, people will look at my results and say, you know, it's kind of, you're, you're magical. It's, you're so consistent. And I'm like, well, I'm consistent at certain things, which then creates a consistent result. So once I became a top performer and I had been an average performer for eight years and then a top performer, I'm the same me, Franchise is the same system. So what changed? What changed was what I was doing. I know what I do now, but more importantly, yeah. I know what I wasn't doing then. Yeah. And that's and this is the coaching that I'm going to give to candidates so that you don't get stuck in the trap of focusing on why it didn't work out for people. Who cares? Find the people who it is working out for and let's role model what they do. Well, you're, you, I was, the next question I was going to ask you is tell me an example of where it doesn't work out that you know of. And I know you're like, don't focus on them, but sometimes it's good well, to know. Right? It's a good to it know. It doesn't work out for people that, um, Do you have an example? that don't have clear goals. Yeah. Like there's a lot of people who come to the idea of investing in a franchise and it's all about the numbers. All mm -hmm. they care about is the numbers. It's like, it's a transaction, but that's never going to be an inspired action and inspire mm -hmm. that person is, is probably not going to be an inspiring leader that people want to work for. Right. Yeah. So you've got to come with a bigger why than just money. The money will come if you're invested with the right people and you have the right potential to scale your business. The wealth will always be created through the scale. Mm -hmm. But so you've got to find the people and you've got to find the opportunity that allows you the market potential to scale up or to scale wide, whichever way you go. That's going to be the most important thing. All right. Sounds good. And let's talk then on your focus, which is the successful people. And uh, let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, the, the successes that you've had and we, Certainly, Ryan sounds like he's, uh, you know, he was on the show recently. Ryan Stegan uh, was really happy with uh, the the types of things you've been working with him. Give us some success stories. I mean, your clients. Okay, so let me first say this again, not to be evasive, but I don't really get to own people's success because my job as the consultant is to teach people how to explore a franchise, mm -hmm. to help you get clear and specific about your vision and what you're trying to accomplish, and then to bring the right types of opportunities to you that match what you're looking to achieve through a business and then to coach you on how to do that due diligence so that you feel competent in what you're doing and ultimately confident in your yes. Right. So I equate my whole part of this process is like a courtship leading to that marriage, to that wedding day where I marry you off to the franchisor and then I go away in theory. <laughs> so I can't really own what people do beyond that moment. I do, but having said that, I don't expect that my people are going to go on and be any less successful than the yeah. average performing person in that sure. franchise. Um, I hope that they're going to go on and become some the rookie of the year and the top performing people, mostly Buck, because the Daily Coach, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely all about the good news. My YouTube channel, uh, Kim Daily TV, is all about sharing the good news. I'm looking for the inspiring stories because that's what's going to inspire people's dreams. Mm -hmm. If all we do is talk about why it doesn't work by the law of attraction, then what are we going to get? We're going to get what we're talking about. So why right. are we focusing on that? Let's right. focus on what we want. And that in a franchise, the gift of a, of a franchise is that 
it's it's built in that you have all these other mentors, not just the franchisor, yeah. but all of the other franchisees. They're uh-huh. not competitors with you. They're going to share what they're doing. People are like, they're going to tell me how to be successful. I'm like, absolutely. That's what we do in franchising because we're all shareholders. So yes, as humans, we love to compete to find out like who has the biggest business at the end of the year. But we all laugh because as long as the, if, if we're all making money and we're all living the life of our dreams then we're, and we're all helping our end customer, then we're all winning, right? So the, the validation that what's what we call it with the existing franchise owners is one of the um, key differences between exploring franchising and looking at a private business for sale or even starting a business on your own. This idea that, again, it's collaborative. We're working with people. Now, I say that, but let me also say that that doesn't mean that an entrepreneur who isn't really into like working with other people can't find a place here. Cause I'm about as independent as they come. My dad will tell you, like I've been the boss of me since I was two years old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. So it's all about then finding the franchise system that gives you enough support, but then gives you enough freedom. Yeah. And, and how would you do that on your own? You, you probably couldn't. I mean, this is why I have a business, really. There are some people that love highly structured environments where every I is dotted and every T is crossed. And that's what's going to make them feel safe with this investment. And then there are others of us that are like, that would be too suffocating. I need a, I need a lot of freedom to like bring myself into that model. And so that's part of what I'm measuring with each candidate to help them figure out what's going to be the most successful Mm -hmm. opportunity for them. Cause that success is not just measured monetarily, right? The money is going to be there. I'm not going to bring you an opportunity that doesn't work financially, but how you work the plan will determine how well financially it works for you. Right. But the success here has to be also defined by, Um, going on and living the life of your dreams. Earlier today, I was talking to a franchisor that was sharing his story about awarding all kinds of licenses through the years. And he was talking about a woman who, when he, when she first bought her franchise, she had the goal to build it to where it was self-sustaining and she could literally live in different parts of the world for six months at a time. Like I'm going to go to Paris and live there for six months and Mm -hmm. then come back and check on my business and then go to Tokyo and live for six months. And I mean, that's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about building wealth. Like that's a definition of wealth, Mm -hmm. not just money, but like time and freedom. So that's what we're, that's what we're talking about here in franchising. I, I don't really quote sell franchising. I sell freedom Mm -hmm. (laughs) like you do. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. Uh, And so, Talk a little bit about, you know, somebody's interested in uh, that. This sounds interesting, and I want to talk to that Kim Daly. What does that look like when people do that? How? What's the process? Okay, sure. So my services are free. You never pay me any money. I get paid like a recruiter. So these franchisors, they don't want to go to trade shows anymore. They don't want to. That's like the old fashioned way of prospecting. Mm-hmm. The, the the 2021 way is they come to consultants. Like they don't Kim go Daly to the bar anymore, say, right, Kim? They, they don't yeah, go to the bar anymore? No, it's all, it's all because, on the uh, dating uh, hotline. Dating <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. I'm like the e-harmony of franchising. That's exactly what we're doing. I have I have videos where I'm like, no, are you no. going to get her? Are you going to get the franchise order to give you a rose? You know, playing <laughs> off the bachelor, the bachelorette. That's funny. So yes, I mean, that's, that's what's going on. They, I maximize their time with the highest quality people who are motivated, financially Uh qualified. So that's why they pay Mm. me to do my job. So, um, for you, that means getting to know you through a two-step process where I'm looking at you personally, professionally, and financially, and then bringing you ideas that have open territory in the markets where you want to be. Once we've got three to five companies that fit what you're trying to accomplish, then I start the dating process, coaching you on how to date a franchisor. And that whole process, Buck, takes about one to two months, depending on how much time somebody has to put in. I'm really consistent around six weeks. That includes everything, figuring out the funding. If you need outside lending, I have have resources for that. It's going over the franchise disclosure document so that you feel Mm -hmm. comfortable with what's in there and how it benefits you and how it really benefits the franchisor (laughs) and why that is. You know, everything from soup to nuts in terms of what you need to know to be competent that you've done good due diligence, asked a lot of questions. Right. 
Good. What am I not asking that you think is important for people to know about franchising? Um, I think you did a great job. You asked me so many fun questions. You know, there's a lot of misconceptions about franchising out there. I mean, I spend a lot of time on my YouTube channel, Myth Busting, and that just comes from 20 years of traveling around the country, hosting live events, fielding all kinds of questions from thousands of audiences. And just, it's not always like the question that's asked, but it's like the tone in which the question is yeah. asked, right? That evil, those evil franchisors, and they're just there to take my money. And the person who's really getting wealth is the franchisor because they're just collecting that royalty every month. And I mean, yeah, we want our franchisor to to be there to support us. And so it takes money for them to keep growing the brand and growing the opportunity. So why do people begrudge the franchisor? And and in fact, I mean, I, I can give you so many stories, my own story, where I'm making a lot of money. I'm living the life of my dreams. I'm I'm helping people every day. I get out of bed every single day excited about what I I get to go do in my business. That's why I've done it for 20 years with so much passion. Like who the heck knew, you know, yeah. and there, so it's not just the franchisor that wins in this equation. It's a win, win for everybody. When we win as the franchisees, then they win. That's a healthy franchise system. That sounds good. Now you have quite a presence. It sounds like, and we were talking about this offline because you, you asked if I'd watch your one of your YouTube, I don't watch any YouTube channels, but you have like more than one, right? So why don't we talk a little bit about those just so we know all the things you're doing. Yeah. So, you know, COVID forced us all to adapt and I couldn't fly and travel and host live events and inspire my people anymore. So I literally had to adapt and it's the greatest adaptation in in the history of my life, my yeah. YouTube channel, which is the daily, you can go to, um, on YouTube, look up the daily coach D A L Y or easier to just go to Kim daily TV again, D A L Y. And, uh, it's been the greatest project I've mm-hmm. ever created. I have super big dreams uh, from the fun that I'm having, interviewing people, sharing stories, uh, busting those myths. Yeah. Um, about franchising, just doing what I would normally do, you know, live event by live event, but I'm able to push out a lot more content this way. Yeah. We're putting out about 15 videos a month right now. Wow. So please check it out, like, and subscribe, ring the bell so that you can be notified. And it's not just on franchising. You know, the daily coach is a millionaire mindset coach. When I reached my uh, history making year back in 2012, it was mm-hmm. really a life changing year for me. And as I was able to turn that into a science that I could replicate and then start to share with other consultants and then start to share with my candidates, it really changed how I coach on everything. And as I got more into my own personal development and understanding this thing called the law of attraction and how it's always been there, whether I knew it or not, like gravity, I was using it, but not deliberately. And then learning to use it deliberately, it's literally changed everything. And so I have my first coaching program, my first millionaire mindset coaching program coming out maybe later this year or probably more likely the first quarter of 2022. But so that's where it's going for me, but you can check it everything out on Kim Daily TV. And also my website is the dailycoach.com. So that's a different, that's a different business that you have. It's sort of a coaching program for people. I mean, it's just in a, in me, what I do, it, I want to help. I'm known in my industry for helping people. Yeah. Like that's what I do. It's not just right. about leading you to the franchise, but I want you to live the life. Like one of your, one of the people I just met through you, an ER doctor, she and her husband just signed their franchise agreement. And I was talking to him yesterday and I said, look, you know, this is like the pass off for me, kind of like kissing you off on your wedding day to your franchise or now and wishing yeah. you good luck. But I'm not just here to get you to the yes. I want you to live the life of your dreams. So if you're having a bad day or you need encouragement or you need more from me, you got to reach back out. And I do all of that kind of coaching for free for my candidates, just because it just, I want to do it. I want to watch these people go on and build the life of their dreams, whatever that would be. It's not always related to money, although money is pretty fun. Yeah, (laughs) Money drives the quality of life that most of us want to live. So it starts with the money, but again, it's usually, it's more than just the money. That's right. Well, I love your enthusiasm, Kim. And uh, yeah, I mean, boy, you are a ball of energy. I'll tell you that much. I'm just, I'm getting, I'm getting tired. Just not kidding. (laughs) 
there's so many good things to do. Oh, you got to be passionate about it. I know. Well, fantastic. And again, it's Kim Daly at uh, thedailycoach.com. That's D-A-L-Y, thedailycoach.com. Kim, thanks for coming back and, and we'll definitely love to hear from you in the future. Thank you so much. I would always, always, always come back, Buck. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. Hey, it's Buck Joffrey. You know how I feel about the stock market. So what would it take for me to invest in the S&P 500? Well, you'd have to minimize fees. You'd have to give me most of the upside of the market and none of the downside. That's right. I don't like losing money. You'd have to let me leverage my gains so that I could amplify my returns. And you'd have to let my money grow tax-free. Think I'm crazy, right? Guess what? I found a strategy that does exactly this and more. It's called Velocity Plus, and it's available to you if you make at least $100,000 per year. To learn more about this life-changing and mind-boggling strategy, go to WealthFormulaBanking.com. Again, that's WealthFormulaBanking.com. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I do encourage you. I mean, listen, what do you got to lose? If you're interested in franchises, call up Kim. It doesn't cost you anything. And you could realize that maybe this is what you've been looking for. You know, if you got nothing going on in the business world, especially, I mean, if you're a W-2 person, that's, it's tough. I mean, you, you don't have a lot of tax advantages. You don't have a lot of growth potential, all that. Um, you know, I'm a big advocate for business ownership and franchises certainly, um, is suitable for, for a lot of people. And so, you know, give her a call. Now, uh, I will also uh, just remind you once more uh, to make sure that if you're interested, if you want to come to our Wealth Formula Meetup, go to wealthformulaevents.com and sign up as soon as possible. Looking forward to seeing you there. That's it for me this week on Wealth Formula Podcast. This is Buck Joffrey signing off.